All right, hey, what's up guys? Gratuitous here from itsgratuitous.com. Remember, if you want to learn how to make beats in FL Studio, you guys can download my free book. It's called Five Keys to a Successful Beat, So Simple It Becomes Creative. To download it for free, just go to itsgratuitous.com forward slash five keys, sign up, and I'll send you the book for free. In this video, I want to talk to you about filters. Filters are so powerful. And I did a really cool trick with filters, which I want to share with you in this video, because usually when we think about filters, we're thinking about low cuts and high cut filters. And if you don't know about that, don't worry, I'm going to show you in the video. Uh, but I first want to let you hear what I did and why it's kind of unique. Okay, so let me just play this for you so you can see what I've done. Right now, I've just focused the kick drum with the automation clip, which is moving this band. So you got to listen close. Okay, so after every two kick drums, I am changing this band, okay? So you can see that at the very, very beginning, it plays around 4,000 hertz, move it forward. So now it's at about 2,500 hertz, come here to the next one. It's about 1,300, and the lowest one goes down to about 850, okay? So I went through this on purpose, and I found where I wanted to boost it. And then with FL Studio's automation clips, you can right click the points. And I just went hold because if it was on single, what happens is it becomes gradual. Okay, so watch this. If I hit play, you're going to see it kind of gradually moves. And that's not what I was wanting. I was wanting it on the hold. And that's what makes this so powerful is because the kick drum stays stat. Um, when I boosted it up, it, it stays static. And so we'll listen again. All right, now let me play this in context of this little beat I made because it's going to reveal to you more of how it sounds, okay? So listen. We'll just play it to here until it comes back around. Notice the kick drum is not playing. Okay, so really, really powerful and a really, really creative way to use an EQ and just kind of boost up the kick drum at different times. Like the kick drum started to have almost like a melody of its own. So I just wanna share with you, for those of you that don't understand about filters and don't know about filters. So I have this piano, it's on insert eight. We'll just open up an EQ here. And so don't feel that you have to have pro Q. okay? Any EQ allows you to get a low cut and a high cut filter. So, and just to let you know, there's also the other way to say it. So there is, um, a high pass filter, which is a low cut filter. It's confusing. And then there is um, a low pass filter, which is actually a high cut filter. So I personally just prefer just to call it a low cut filter because you don't really have to think opposite. Um, we're just cutting the lows and then here is the highs, okay? So we have a high cut filter and we have a low cut filter. These are what we uh, most commonly know filters for. But again, I just created a band like this and then I automated I automated this um, like on like where it goes on the frequency. Now it's important to really learn about filters because if you don't know about filters, you're not really taking advantage of like the powerful tools that we have as producers. A low cut filter gives you a different sound than a high cut filter, but they each have their own place within music production. And I just want to play with them for you, okay? So um Right now I have this piano and it's routed to insert eight and we just have an EQ. Okay, so I'm just gonna play it. And as I am adjusting this, think about like your favorite like dance music when they start filtering things out and it starts to really build tension in the song before like the chorus drops or something. That's where these that's where we start to use these filters a lot. Okay, so imagine this is like in a song and it's just about to drop, like into like the chorus, whatever. We bring it back. Okay, you, you can go slow, you can go, you know, whatever. You can also adjust your steepness. 
okay? Your steepness is gonna give you a different sound, okay? I don't wanna go too much into that. I just wanna just reveal to you if you don't know about filters, they're so powerful. So here is the high cut. Again, very, very powerful, gives you a different sound. Something you have to be careful of with a high cut filter is if you cut too low, you're not really gonna hear it too much because you're cutting too much of the mids to highs, okay? So that's just one thing that you gotta be careful of. Whereas on the low cut, since you are cutting the lows, like you're more hearing the mids and highs, so you don't have to be too concerned. On um, when you, you so let's delete this one. Okay, so when you use the low cut, you don't have to be too concerned because again, you're cutting the lows, you're keeping the mids and the highs. You're gonna be a little bit concerned if it goes way too much like this. This isn't too bad, but uh, usually, you know, around here is like, where, look where I'd go. Okay, so again, that's the low cut. Now the high cut, again, we just gotta be careful if you go too low, sounds like this. Okay, think about like your favorite dance music. You know, they're using these filters all the time. So watch, if we go too low, you know, you really can't hear it anymore. So you gotta be careful. So let me give you an example of more of like in a dance track. It'd be more like this. Right, it's building up. And then you're gonna build it up again slowly. Okay, and then now like the, the whole song would be going on. And to create an automation clip to do something like that is in FL Studio, you just right click a knob and you go create automation clip. Now, if you're using a third party plugin, um, Pro-Q in VST3 allows you just to right click, but if you're using a third party plugin, you're gonna have to move the knob first, come up here to tools, just go last tweaked, and then create automation clip. And when you create the automation clip, you're gonna see that it just makes it for you right here in the playlist for you. And so you can adjust this however you want, okay? And you can see that when the song plays, this is gonna play. I'm not in song mode, okay? So there you go. Uh, let's, let's just bring it all back in. So it'd be like this. Okay, so, but you can see that, you know, I created the automation clip. That's how you can start creating your own automation clip and be creative. So in this case, I had the kick drum. It actually, I actually sent it to a distortion uh, send. And then on the distortion send, that's where I did this automation clip, which is this right here. And again, I did it on hold. So we'll listen. Right? And we're just listening to the kick drum with just the filter. Okay, super powerful. I wanna show you one more thing here, okay? So for those of you that are on the email list and stuff like that, you guys know that I'm gonna be releasing Beat Tapes by Gratuitous Volume 9 here very soon. I released one of the tracks publicly. It's called The Come Up. And I wanna share how I used filters within that track. And we're just gonna do it just quickly, okay? So let me load up the project. All right, so for those of you who have listened to this song already, when you look at this project, do you, you know, did you think that this is what the project would look like when you listen to the song? Because typically, like, you know, what I always try to, to uh, tell students is like, you know, when we hear music, we think, oh, it's so busy. They must be doing all these things. But many times with music production, it's like the simple things that, that really make things powerful. And then we enhance it further through like filters or, or stuff like that. We take the idea and then we push it a little further. Okay, so this is what the project looks like. And if you haven't heard this song, I'll leave a link in the description. I gave a sneak peek of the beat and it's gonna take you to my website where you can check out this beat for free. Okay, so um, as you can see here, we have our filters down here. So I hit F9 to bring up the mixer, and I filtered out this uh, this a lot. Okay, so you can see I filtered out this on the on the uh, on the EQ on the Pro Q. Okay. I also have a little bit of automation on the kick drum to build it up.
Okay, so, and then once it hit like the chorus, then I uh, turned off the automation clip and then I brought it back right here. So again, um, for those of you who know my teaching style, I always talk about audio painting, preparing the listener for what's coming in the song. So right here is kind of like the breakdown. You can see I took out the, the hats. I removed the claps totally with the hi-hat. I kept this little off hat and I put some reverb on it. And it sounds like this. So you can hear the white noise. And that's that's something I felt I did filtering here. So let's go to the white noise. So here's white noise. Check this out. Okay, so what we're looking at right here is this automation clip, which is controlling the white noise right here. And you'll see. See it opens up, comes back. I'll just solo it out so you can hear a little better. Gotta unmute it. Okay, it comes up a little slowly. So this is building tension. All right, so watch, we listen to that in context of the beat now, and we'll watch that. And so once I do that, it builds up to almost like another little drop before it hits like the big chorus, so. And it's just following this automation clip, and this is a filter. This is a high cut filter. See, high cut. All right, and then um, I'll let you guys hear the chorus a little bit for those who haven't heard it. I will continue from here because again, you can see that I enable the filter and we're gonna listen for how that filter is removing frequencies and it's just building tension in the song. Again, this is all with filters, right? We have our main melody, like this track, again, if you've heard it, it ha it's just like this main melody, this guitar. And it's all from a single guitar note, okay? So I use a single guitar note to make this beat. So that melody, this lead is all from a single guitar note. And the bass line. But that's all I have for instruments. I have a guitar, a lead, and a bass. And then the percussion, like a kick drum, clap, all that stuff. Okay, so it comes from here and then it breaks down and that's where I'm taking advantage of the filter. And we'll just ride it out. We'll listen to this whole thing because it builds up. You can see again with audio painting, I have kick drums going on, like fast kick drums. Uh, we have our clap bring in and um, I add the bass in as well. But it's the filter which is helping this transition. So essentially at this point in the song, because again, you always got to listen from the listener's point of view. At this point in the song, we're breaking it down because we're bringing the chorus to the listener and they're waiting for it. So here we go. All right, so up here is a volume automation. That's not what we're looking at. It's down here. Okay. You can see this is moving. All right. And it's this. It's getting brighter. And then we cut it out. Okay, so there's two things I did there. First of all, I filtered out the guitar, but then I actually totally removed the guitar, and that's where I put my transition before the chorus. Did you hear how it kind of filtered out? So over here it's really bright, and then over here it's really dark. See, it's opening up. All right, and then that is where my audio painting transition comes in, and then hits the chorus. Okay, so we'll listen to that.
All right, so I hope you guys learned something in this video. If you want more learning about filters, you guys should check out my course. It's called All About Filters. You're gonna learn about automation clips. You're gonna learn about filters, low cut filters, high cut filters, how we can use them to build emotion and tension in our song. Um, I'll leave the link in the description. Again, if you're brand new around here and you're wanting to learn FL Studio, you guys can download my free book. It's called Five Keys to a Successful Beat. Just go to itsgratuitous.com forward slash five keys. Sign up with your first name and email and I'll give it to you absolutely for free. Now, if you're really serious and you really want to learn FL Studio, I highly suggest checking out my FL Studio Beginners book. If you're interested in that, just go to itsgratuitous.com forward slash beginner. It'll take you to a sales page about the beginner's book, about the course, some reviews on there. It's really gonna help you out, okay? So thank you so much for checking out this video. Be on the lookout for Beat Tapes by Gratuitous Volume 9. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. You guys can also subscribe to stay updated when I release new videos. Mm -hmm.